Cue the creepy music. Hello and welcome to The Witching Hour, where a disturbed author tortures another disturbing author from Raventail Publishing about how they torture their readers. My name is Greg Stumbo, author of the Generation Z series, among others. My guest today is Andrew Weston, and he is the author of Cambion, and he's got several series out, uh, several books. We're going to be talking about all those. And also joining us today is Melody from Pennsylvania, who's a member of the Raven Tortured Readers Group on Facebook. So, Andy, welcome to the show. Well, hello. Thank you for inviting me. I hope you don't regret it. <laughs> I certainly don't think I'm going to. I, th I think we're going to just, you know, find ourselves in an Alice in Wonderland type rabbit holes. This is beautiful. So let's let's cut to the chase, man. I don't have a whole lot of time. Uh, tell me how the book ends. Take me to the ending. Get me excited. Uh, of this particular book or the series as a whole? Or do you want to blend it together a bit? Let's start with this first book and then look at the whole series. Okay. Oh, oh, well, um, um, the first book, well, uh, the first two books are, are closely aligned, a, a hybrid tale and Call of the Cambion, because there's, there's two of, of the series out at the moment. And if you remember um, in the blurbs to that, or, or those who've read the blurbs, it's really emphasizing that Augustus has been after his spawn father for two and a half centuries. Uh, there's a lot of history going on there. Uh, one for the way Fanon abused his earth mother or his birth mother um, when they first met, for the way they were discarded and abandoned. And of course, Augustus is really, really pissed about uh, the way he's having to contend now with uh, the Cambian side of his nature. Uh, he's a monster, but he's a good guy struggling you know, to contend against what he is, uh, especially after puberty kicked in. Uh, so although he struggles to maintain his humanity, it's a constant battle. So there's an, an inevitability about them meeting. And all I'll say, yeah, well, there's a, yeah, obviously there's a lot of pent up emotion there that needs to vent. And let's just say that when the venting takes place, it's apocalyptic in scale. I love it. Well, I mean, you you, you got a half demon. It's going to have to be apocalyptic. That's the, there, There's no way yeah. around that. <laughs> and what I've been also careful to do, I, I have a knack. I, I try and create my characters so that people really form an attachment to them. You know, I want people to like, not just the main uh, the character, Augustus, but some of the other sub characters as well, you know, and, and I do it by basing, ba although it's like a dark fantasy horror novel, I base it firmly in the here and now, uh, as I say, but life's never easy, is it? And so as you start to fall for them, you know, let's just say I'm, I, I'm a, a fan of George R. R. Martin. So <laughs> don't, don't expect those characters that you love to um, all of them to stay alive. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, anything that's got an apocalyptic ending, I am all yep. about. That's, you know, I mean, if, if you're going to bring it to an end, bring everything to the end. Well, that, that's one of the main ways they feed you. See, yeah, it's like through strong emotions and that's either terror or sexual arousal. So uh, I'm very fortunate that in the past I had some uh some good ladies uh at a, a particular press to school me how to write good sex scenes and it's a lot harder than you think oh, yeah, I'm God. Sure. <laughs> yeah I, I would not do that for a living and especially <laughs> there's, there, there's me critiquing my work they got me do you, do you want a true story very brief one they oh, got yeah. me to write a short story a hardcore uh, short story so they could critique it and show how to present it properly and you can see how it paid off in the Cambian journals to it. But when I was doing it at the time, I was sweating buckets because like, it's just weird. You know, but, <laughs> I, and it, but it really brought home to me how you got to learn your craft and, and that type of thing. Those who do it for a living, oh, kudos to them because, you know, it's not something I'd touch. No way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's, yeah, I, 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 that's a rabbit hole I just haven't tried to go <laughs> down. So. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I never thought it could happen to me. <laughs> Yeah. Now, Andrew, do you uh, find sometimes that your characters sort of hijack the story and take you in unexpected turns? Um, sometimes I do, because I used to be quite a planner. Uh, but then I found, uh, you know, because I, I lay out what I call a skeleton to work from, and then I start adding the organs as, as we go through. So although I've got a, a, an idea how it's going to begin and how it's going to end, I th I've now become quite fluid in the way we get from point A to point Z. Uh, because as you write it through, something will come to you and yeah, let's go that way. And sometimes when you go with it, 
what comes out is absolutely superb it really is and um you know by following that and this happened in the in the cabbages i took it along certain lines and in certain ways as an idea came to me i just went with the flow and it oh it, it just turned out lovely you know but that that i can't relate to the other books that aren't out yet but uh yeah, as readers will see if um hopefully people become fans of the series they'll just see that there's certain twists and turns in it that came about purely by you know flying by your pants and oh uh, yeah, I was extremely pleased with the results. It's my favorite of all the work I've done. This is my favorite series. I love that. I love that. So the, this this being your favorite series, I got to know, and 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 the listeners want to know, what is your favorite part of the book? Oh, well, in the latest uh, book, which is uh, Call of the Cambion, it's too long to read, unfortunately, because, um, you know, it, it would just go on. So can I set the scene to it? Because yes. the demon, and when they came to earth, they were created during the rebellion in heaven. And that they they stem from fallen angels that that were twisted and warped during the process of falling. But uh, not only they're beautiful and immortal killers, but they're also narcissistic. You see, they're power hungry, they're remorseful. Uh, sorry, remorseless, uh, and they're extremely jealous of their power. And they do anything to retain that power. And when certain empires in the past, because they are as old as mankind, were well, older than mankind, uh, when they try certain world empires try to rise up against them. They created cambions and especially though um you know intermingling with humans and if those humans happen to be of what's called i call the high blood direct descendants from adam uh then wow you know they are incredibly more powerful more beautiful more terrible the trouble is the dim and dim don't like that so they only created a relative few but that's all that was needed to devastate the armies and of course being the demon dim uh, as soon as they serve the purpose, bam, it took the entire demon dim legions to wipe out the relative few cambions there were. So how uh, Augustus gets to be created, that comes out in the book. But anything to do with cambions was uh, any relics, any totems, any of their weapons, because of the power associated with them, they were put into a special sanctuary and locked away. And just as well, because humans that go into this, uh, this type of sanctuary it would kill them immediately. Any of the demon in that go in are dri driven crazy. They're driven crazy um, and they will kill themselves because it's just too much for them. It's like heroin, crack cocaine, and you know, everything all at once. <laughs> a cambion, and the, the thing is though, a cambion that goes in there, it calls on their basest nature. And Augustus has fought for so long not to give into that. He still tried to retain his humanity. So the reason I'm telling you this is that in the book, he goes at the beginning of the second book, A Call of the Cambion. He actually has to enter this sanctuary, not to gain power or anything like that, but he wants to find out more about himself and his kind because, you know, his, his whole purpose in life is one, to destroy his father, two, to destroy the demon dim as a whole. But of course, going into this place, he underestimates it because no sooner does he enter than, than the spirit of the place calls out to him. Uh, you know, it lures him, as it were, like a siren to the dark side, grants him visions of what the earth will be like under his rule. And it's, you remember that scene from Hellboy, where yeah. you see this, dev yeah, it's worse than that, you know. Oh, man. So, <laughs> realize, so this scene, realizing he's overstepped himself, he deliberately triggers hidden wards, alarms, that will bring the demon dims, top assassins, their top elite warriors, uh, there's a contingent standing by that can withstand it for a short time, hoping that they'll get him out of there, you know, to save everything. Because if, if if it goes, it goes. Like I say, it's apocalyptic. Uh, so he triggers the alarms. And eight of these warriors, to, no, I'll talk more about the warriors later on, uh, hopefully. But when they come, they bring with them a demon dim elder, Eblis, the fair. And those who've read the first book, A Hybrid's Tale, know that Eblis, although he looks quite young, he is an absolute scumbag. He's a master of the mind. He'll twist you, drive you nuts and things like this. And because they had a face off to begin with, and so we say Augustus pulled his punches, he's a bit overconfident. So in this opening scene, which it, you know, it goes ballistic, he turns up with eight of these top assassins. Ah, oh, we're going to have him. Oh, no, no, no. Because so, <laughs> uh, then what you get, and I, I'm, I've am i built a bit of a reputation about doing good combat scenes, even complex ones. I let, you know, the reader well, you doesn't get the, you lose. You get that from your, your, your actual real life. real life background. So yeah, well, yeah. You know and, that and, intimately. And, and, and I've learned to split it down from different perspectives, create timelines, and then interlink them, so to speak. So you get it from different perspectives. And what you get here is the Cambian Sanctuary itself trying to twist him and seduce him. You've got Eblis trying to break his mind. You've got the Ford Warriors giving it Kung Fu 
you know, <laughs> mm, the Padawan. And, uh, and of course, there's, there's Augustus himself was trying to juggle all this simultaneously. So it's an absolutely awesome scene that hopefully people will love from the word go. <laughs> well, man, I, this, this is, I mean, this is just layers upon layers upon layers. I mean, uh, you know, You've got you've got a 30 second scene that, that you know, it sounds like it takes three chapters to to get all of the different things yeah. going on. Well, I, I time trying to read through it and because you have to be quite precise so, so that the reader doesn't lose where they are. It just takes too long to read it, unfortunately. But when you read it for yourself, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be diving into this. This, I mean, you know, I, I love things that get that complicated. You've got an entire world, an entire system. You know, yeah. I mean it's it, it, this oh, this is a book that sucks you in you know thank you, and, thank and you. This, well this I, I did my homework yeah, yeah. i would do i'm a great believer in world building you've got to give it a place to live a time to live a reason you know you've got to why are they there what can they do what can't they do what are they let me say well how do they you know so what are the repercussions of their existence you've you've got to build uh you work on a firm foundation otherwise it's not going to stand up you know so well, yeah. from what I've seen, you've got a very firm uh, foundation indeed. I, I managed to read about the first three or four chapters this morning. It's definitely got me hooked. I'm I'm definitely going to follow the series. Thank you. And, Thank you. And I'm hey. going to dive into some of your other books too, because I'm really intrigued already. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Kind. Just saying the truth. Ah, excellent. Thank you. Okay. So um, I got to ask, do the voices in your head ever fall out in public no they don't because um i've learned to live with them so it's, it's funny you say that because this actual the entire series came from uh dreams repetitive dreams i've i've always had repetitive dreams since childhood oh, wow. i i grew up in a, in a real life genuine haunted house and uh part of the things that came with that uh between the ages of three and eleven were repetitive dreams and this one actually came from a dream i had that repetitively for over three months and so it helped me lay the foundation of it and so I'm used to not talking about it out loud, you see. <laughs> I, I, let the, I let the written page do it. And they go, what's this guy on? <laughs> yeah. What does oh, this yeah, mean? I can, <laughs> I, can, I, 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 I can see you, you know, you know, consulting with somebody or, or, or trying to, to train somebody and then suddenly just going off into a, you know, spew yeah. about the, the demon worlds. And, and that's going to go over really well in a business meeting. I can, I can see that. Right <laughs> It's got that vacant look. Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm thinking about that. And that, and this, and that. And the unicorns are dancing around my head. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So, um, tropes. Do you love them mm -hmm. or hate them? It depends if it's done well. This is why I have a, a problem sometimes with uh, the horror. I do, believe it or not. I've had a problem with the horror genre in the past because because of growing up in a, I say, a real life haunted house, it, um, think um, poltergeist, think the sixth sense, things like that have happened to me. So I don't get scared by, for example, in the horror, uh, and some, some of the, the tropes, but they've got to be done well because when they then start hitting, you know, the, oh, God, you can virtually get the crystal ball out, not that you need, oh, this is going to happen, then that's going to, and bam, bam, bam. You know. So make it different. You know, for goodness sake, if you put all that work in, that's why I like your series. I, you know, I know we're here to talk about the Cambian journals, but um, you know, that's why I love, like your Generation Z thing. It's just so different from the the normal deluge of zombie things. I love the you know the, that different thing for you know the Dungeon Masters of Disaster. They're absolutely <laughs> useless, you know. And it's it is what real life will be. That's why I, I, uh, we've chatted before. I love um, Shaun of the Dead. You know, they're, they're just so incompetent, and yeah. it's <laughs> what the majority of people would be like. So make it different if you're going to follow a well-established trope make it different make it stand out or do it so well that people think whoa you know why has no one done it like this before oh well that's that's fantastic and 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 thanks i'm, I'm glad you really enjoy the series and oh and, i am uh, this is um this is why i've got you going as yeah. the very first uh raven tail podcast episode is uh, because you were the very first author to, you know, uh, connect with me on Twitter. You were the very first author who, who reviewed my work and, you know, <laughs> um, as a new author that, that gave me a sense of legitimacy that I was pretty sure I hadn't actually earned yet. Oh, so, you know, I, no. I you know, you went to the the imposter syndrome, which I didn't even think was a real <laughs> thing. And then I'm yeah. like, oh my God, <laughs> you know, so yeah. I'll be, I'll um, be on to your final book. In fact, in a couple of weeks, you know, cause I, I have an absolute shed load as you've seen on my facebook page i've published oh, what i hope yeah. to read and <laughs> uh, and with the other reviews i do as well uh, for different pu publishing houses uh like uh, amazing stories and 
the magazine of anti-scene science. You know, it just takes so much time. But yeah, I'll get to your last one in in a two weeks' time. I think it is two or three. Yeah. And uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Want to see oh, how yeah. the guys oh, yeah. mess well, up again? <laughs> I, I I promise it's not the last one. I'm I'm currently working yeah. on the next. Oh, good. So it's, Call for Clark. Yeah. Call for Clark. Know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we'll keep going until everybody's dead or there's a you know happily ever <laughs> after. Which you know this yeah. it is a horror series. I don't anticipate yeah. a happily ever yeah. after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So who or what is your biggest influence? Oh my goodness. I. Th- think um it's either the, the voices in my head is one thing or or um people that i've read of is because i do read a lot extensively and some some um uh, authors i've stuck with for decades stephen donaldson the master of the slow burn raymond feast now i know some of these guys they've met and well i've chatted to them they've helped me and uh schooled me a little bit ray feast was wonderful to me as i was breaking out um and i followed his um you know what started as a magician for years and again a different style of writing but again this 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 epic s- scope of a uh, branching off in you know and and the, the subplots and subgenres branching off from it tad williams out there different one and neil gaiman what a great guy um oh, yeah. because again he's totally i said you know, I, I asked him who his supplier was because yeah, I want some of that, you know, for my, and <laughs> yeah, so they're, they're, if people like that are my influences and, and just be open. You don't know everything. You can't learn everything, but if someone's got a good idea, think, oh, how can I use that? How can I adapt it to what I do? And by, you know, it, it helps keep you fresh, helps um, make you think in, in different directions. And again, you can see it in your writing that it comes across as a fresh idea and or a new twist, a new angle. And there you go it's a good influence Mm -hmm. that's 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 a big pile of great influences right there that's Mm -hmm. you know and it's it's pretty obvious with your with your writing style you know um not only in your books but when you're when you're doing reviews and and you know i mean and just your interactions with other people it's you can tell that there's a lot going on with you that Mm -hmm. you've pulled from a lot of different places there's there's an experience level that um you just don't see with a lot of people so oh, thank you thank you, you know. well it's, it's it's a thing of supporting each other uh people you know, you pour your heart and soul into projects and there are just too many people out there who want to be overly and you know some of the worst ones i'm sorry are brits and i'm from the uk and they are so finicky you're thinking boom you know <laughs> suck up my pump action shotgun dip um i don't know if you could sorry but uh <laughs> it, it is they are absolute I don't know if you can swear on this. Sorry, but um, you know, I don't. I don't really have a censor, but we do have a producer, so you know. Okay, so (laughs) they are absolute bleeps, and uh, and they are, and I think, God, come on, be supportive. You know, you know. Okay, there's always going to be a little slip up in editing because nothing is ever perfect. You know, I mean, some of Raymond Facebook, so you know, they've got the spelling goes in because you know they they go through in. In, in in uh you know huge volumes of work uh or there might be a dropped letter here or this other but look at what the person has put into it and then take you know see the positive in it and appreciate what they've done in their unique style they put their their personality into it it's wonderful yeah and and the, the whole supporting thing i know what you're talking about I've, I've i've run across a few people that you know they try and put themselves up on a pedestal and look down and i'm like you don't know how much you're losing by doing that. Yeah, you you may be somewhat successful, but you would be 10 times more successful if you if you actually took a step down and worked with other people yeah. because they're going to push you up as much as you push them up. So, yeah. uh, and that's that's what I love about the Raventail community is, is yeah, the, you know, all the, the authors great. are, you know, we're not in competition with each other. And, you know, other authors outside of the publishing house, we all interact with them as well. It's, you know, Okay, yes, I've got a book series, you've got a book series. Well, guess what? People will read my series and then they will move on to your series. It's not, they, they're not choosing one or the other. Mm. So, yeah, they anyway. support each other. And it, it, it all pays off in the end. If the, if the, the publishing house do well, we do well. <laughs> hey, yes, you know, so, exactly. Yeah. I have to ask this for, for my own, you know, personal reason. Uh, do you laugh when you're killing off your characters? <laughs> no. Yes. No, yes. <laughs> it, um, <laughs> it depends. I who love they that are. answer. Um, it depends who they are. If if, I, if I've done it well, when I read over it, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, if it's particularly gruesome and nice and bloody, yes, you know, yeah. um, okay. I mean, it just comes just in your mind, and it's good. Good. I f- I feel better about myself now. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Now, now I'm gonna I'm gonna put you in an awkward uh, situation here. I've uh, I've taken on a, a bunch of questions from uh readers and uh-huh. 
These are <laughs> these are just random questions that that okay. they send in that they just want to hear from authors about, and it went into a grab bag. So I I call this the grab bag of doom. Okay. So let's uh, let's see what we got in the grab bag today. I've got uh, Rebecca from Liberty Township, Ohio. What's the craziest thing you've ever done for cash? For cash. For cash. I, I've um. I don't know if I can say. <laughs> I, I, I've donated um, something special of myself. <laughs> um, it's it's um, I'm in the in the background. I'm a bit of a geek. I'm in uh, Mensa, uh, mm -hmm. and I have been for a number of years. And uh, if for somehow, even though I was dropped on the head, fell out of the stupid tree, that every branch on the way down, I have this weird <laughs> IQ. And uh, the people advertised in the thing, you know, we will give you cash if you donate. Um, they would say your intellect. Yes, yes that's what it is. <laughs> and, uh, right on. Okay, you know, yeah. Um, <laughs> so there we go. So you're, in, you're spreading I, intelligence fifty dollars at a yeah, time, is what you're yeah. saying. I, I intellected myself <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Oh, oh, I hope this beautiful. gets through. <laughs> you know, I feel better about the world knowing that that's actually taken place. There's, there's hope yeah, for the next yeah. generation. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Okay, Another question. Um, Come on. Try it again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how embarrassing. Uh, there you go. All right. Uh, I, I, we talked about this before the uh, before we actually started the cast today, but I'm I'm going to ask this for the listeners. Um, do you put Easter eggs in your books? Uh, yes, um, but I was, as I'm new to Raven Tale, um, readers might not be aware of it yet, but those who follow me for a while will. Um, I've, I'm responsible for a number of series. Uh, I mentioned them briefly, the, the Guardian series, uh, the Ninth series, based, uh, people call it the Ix series, but it was based on um, what really happened to the Lost Ninth Legion of Rome in a sci-fi time travel setting. The, uh, what I call the Reaper Chronicles, um, that's set in the Heroes in Hell shared universe. And of course, now we've got uh, the, the, the Cambian journals I'm doing for Raventel and others that aren't published yet. But what I like to do, so, uh, and as some of my readers have noticed, I might use a certain phrase, uh, a certain name uh, or an organization, and it's repeated. Now, they mean different things slightly in the different books. For example, in certain series, you'll find the term inquisitors. And these are pre-Star Wars Inquisitors, I would add. <laughs> um, but yes, they sound as they are in one series. The other ones, they're like, um, you know, a secret intelligence service and so on. But yeah, I sprinkle this throughout and to see if people can spot them. And I've had competitions in the past. Can you spot, you know, the Easter egg in this one? And it could be a name, as I say, a phrase or, you know, things like hyperstratus, Ethernet, you know, things like this. And yeah, That's so I brilliant. do. Hey, do, do you mind if I borrow that idea and, and you know, run, run the competitions on the Easter eggs? <laughs> it's it's quite that's, good, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. brilliant, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, so yes, I do. In in brief, I I love it. I love it. I you know, and I, and you know, that's the, I love to go hunting for those. Mm. So you know, um, if I know there's an Easter egg hunt, I'm I'm diving in, and and I will totally geek out. You know, hunting those things down. Yeah. Let's see. Before our time runs out, definitely, uh, we our our listeners have gotten this far in, and they've they've dealt with us babbling back and forth about all kinds of things. So I like to give them a little bonus. Can you can you give us some spoilers for the listener? Um, yeah, sure. Um, you know those forge I mentioned earlier on the elite warriors mm -hmm. to become a member of the forge. Uh, it, it's quite in depth. Uh, the 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 member that the incubus or the the uh, succubus in, involved they must have lived, shall we say, a meticulously nasty life for at least five hundred years. They've got to have been sponsored by some of the. Uh, either the anvil of the forge, that's the supreme commander of them, or, or one of the two hammers. There's an incubus hammer, there's a, a succubus hammer, that le, like in charge of like a subdivision of them. They then undergo 10 years of training, 10 years. And if you think, because uh, uh, the, the process involved, it kills it, uh, over half of the um, applicants. You know, think of like the Spartan program in Halo, yeah. or think of the, um, like what the witches go through. By the end of it, they are absolutely lethal, but coldly disciplined. So when, uh, you know, you think uh, think for like death dealers in Underworld or the Jedi or the Sith or in the boys, um, Black Noir, the ninja, yeah. they are far more lethal than that. So these four decessions, you think about them, obviously they're mortal enemies with Augustus Thorn. However, a spoiler that you can look out for is that obviously because they're so disciplined, 
because they're so cold, they respect seeing discipline in others. And when they see how Augustus Thorne conducts himself, this like self-imposed rigidity uh, that he has over his life and so on, it starts to build a little bit of respect. And lo and behold, it happens to him as well. He starts to recognize, oh, yeah. And so don't <laughs> be surprised if you find that, that mutual respect growing perhaps into, ah, shall we say, well, a bit of a liaison I in one way it. or another that can have this uh, an alliance that has all sorts of unseen repercussions. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's a, that's a lot to look forward to into these. Mm. All right, real quick, uh, 30 okay. seconds. Um, where can people find your stuff? Oh, uh, it's obviously on, on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, the uh, major, for, for the uh, Cambian journals, the, the, the e-book sellers. Um, I'll, I'll stick to the Cambian journals because that's with Raventail. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, uh, and and basically through the site itself at Raventail Publishing, I look forward to people uh, you know dipping in and uh, reading the book and getting to know Augustus well. Excellent, excellent. Well, guys, I want to thank Melody for joining us today from the uh, Raven Tortured Readers Group on Facebook. Uh, this has been The Witching Hour, uh, mm -hmm. produced through uh, Raven Tail Publishing. Our producer is Trent Aki. My name is Greg Stumbo, and we've had contributions from uh, Patrick Green and Karen Hall, and I look forward to all of you coming into the very next episode. Thank you all very much.